Hey guys, Lock in here. A quick announcement before we get started. I recently, about two weeks ago, unofficially joined Team Gwinnelman, and just a bit ago made an official announcement on joining Team Gwinnelman and stepping away from Team Aratuza. I just wanted to say a huge thanks to Team Aratuza for the opportunities that they provided me and everything I was able to do with them, and a huge thank you to Gwinnelman for allowing me to step into their prestigious ranks and continue to make content for them. Uh, phenomenal team, Team Arantuza. I'm sure they have a lot of great things looking forward for them. They have a lot of phenomenal, talented players, and I'm sure you'll be seeing them at more and more Gwent Masters events looking forward. With that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get into the video itself, and it's a new series I'm doing called Lock-Ins Lessons, where we take things that don't necessarily apply just to one deck, but your, you know, gaming ability as a whole, and we try to make improvements where we can to, you know, improve your play. And the first one is just going to be on Tilt. And we're going to say, you know, what it is, what causes it, how to handle it, and what you can do to, you know, make it work for you, this knowledge that we're going to be going over. So let's just first talk about what tilt is. Tilt is when your emotions begin to cloud your rational abilities and judgment. And let's kind of talk about the science behind that. When your brain perceives a threat or a problem, it switches into this sort of response mode. And this threat can be anything, you know, maybe it's a physical threat, like someone moving aggressively towards you, or it can be losing 20 MMR in a match. The thing is, your brain doesn't make the distinction on what this threat is, it just recognizes that there is a threat, and it goes into a response mode, no matter what. In the response is you get an emotional reaction, usually anger, sometimes fear, which turns into this anger. And your brain gives the reins over to something called your amygdala, and this gives you an instinctive reaction, which is sort of like when you flinch, when someone makes a punching motion towards you. And the amygdala is a small cluster of nuclei in the brain responsible for these situations, and it takes over in these situations. The problem is when it goes into this fight or flight mode, your rational brain shuts down. And your amygdala knows you're under some sort of threat, but when you know it's under this threat of losing MMR, it doesn't really know how to react. It may understand how to handle someone, you know, aggressively shoving you. It doesn't understand what your rank 20 MMR goals are. And so left with no rational brain functioning and your amygdala not knowing how to react, it kind of just malfunctions and begins to behave in a self-destructive manner. And then you tilt and then you start raging. And that's kind of what happens. So let's break it down again into its full four steps and kind of how it happens in Gwent. So something happens. Maybe your opponent played four spies with Circle Rule and Runestone and Heim, or maybe you queued into Hinsult four games in a row and lost the flip all four times. Maybe you just misplayed and then you realized it and you got upset about the LP you cost yourself. Either way, this causes you to feel threatened, and that means your MMR. Now what happens is you feel your MMR and your ranking being threatened, and you have this emotional response of anger or fear of losing, and you begin to rage and blame other things. And seeing this happen, your amygdala gives you an instinctive reaction, but it doesn't know how to react. There is no instinctive reaction for you know losing MMR. So it starts panicking because it doesn't know how to react, and so it malfunctions, and you start acting irrationally and emotionally because your rational brain is shut down, and suddenly you're playing poorly and you've lost seven games in a row. Now you're back at rank 19. So that's why you tilt, and Gwent is having RNG introduced into the game, and I don't care what your opinion is at all on that. Take that nonsense to one of the 10 million Reddit threads on it, I really don't care. The point is it's happening. There is more RNG being introduced into Gwent. I'm not saying a lot, I'm not saying I hate it, I'm not saying I love it. I'm just saying that in some way or another, it is happening. So inevitably, there will be variants that you perceive to be negative against you, and it will cause you to tilt. But we now understand how tilt works on a fundamental level, so let's try to make that knowledge work for us. When, when I worked in the League of Legends scene as an analyst and a, and a coach, one of the best ways that I was able to help people not tilt was to just tell them to one, just step away from the game whenever you feel yourself upset about a loss. No matter how upset, whether it's, you know, you want to break something around you or just you're very slightly upset about the way it ended or you feel the game was stolen from you, step away. It, it'll just give you this ability to reset and have, a, you know, a great outlook again when you come back to it. So you can go take a shower Poker players actually step away from the table, and tilt actually originated as a term in poker. And the way poker players avoid tilting is they step away from the table, they go to the bathroom, and they splash cold water on their face after a bad hand. And this kind of helps them reset. And another thing you can do is, and this works for gamers really well, is you can play another game for, you know, 20 minutes. 
And ideally you want that to be single player. I personally play Hearthstone if I feel myself becoming tilted in Gwent because I don't, I'm don't. i not invested at all in Hearthstone. I'm not invested in the outcome. So know that the outcome won't affect me. But if you're going to be playing a multiplayer game where you're very invested in the outcome, it's not a good idea. It's not going to help you not tilt. In fact, it's going to actually just add to the tilt you already had if you do poorly. So I would advise you to probably step away and play a single player game for a bit to reset. Another way that you can attempt to do this is use some of that adrenaline and energy you have as part of that fight or flight response response and just do something you know just get up and go start your laundry or do some jumping jacks or make your bed do something to use that energy and that instinctive response so that your amygdala can you know stop malfunctioning and feel like it's handling the threat appropriately and then of course the best thing to do with stepping away is if you can and it's late just go to sleep. A good night's sleep is the best way to reset in these situations. Obviously, if it's three o'clock and you're sitting down to play after you just got home from school, it's probably not the time to go to sleep. But, you know, if you can or it makes sense, the best way to reset, just hard reset men mentally is just, you know, you know, give it a night's sleep and just restart tomorrow. Another thing that we can look to do to try to improve is the second one. Don't look at the MMR you gain or lose after each game. When I'm not streaming, I don't track my MMR at all. I never actually go all the way over to that screen that shows MMR. I find that it just negatively impacts me. One of the things I do is I turn off the feature on my tracker so I can't see mine or my opponent's MMR. And the thing is, part of the reason we tilt, and m the main reason we tilt, is because we're so invested in our MMR. And if we focus on improving and making the right plays, and we stop caring as much about our MMR, we'll know that we're taking the right long-term steps to get good at the game rather than putting all of our values into this arbitrary number. And that's the problem, is when you put these your values into this number, it's very easy to tilt, because win streaks come and go in games. It's very natural. It's a part of a game. So the best thing you can do is to just disregard that number. Focus on what you can do. And this is a very tough thing to do while you're in the middle of a, you know, a bad losing streak. It's a very rational decision that you have to make to not look at the MMR. So my advice is get into the habit while you're, you know, while you're even winning. Turn off the feature on your tracker while you're doing fine. It'll just help you in the long run. And then when you get done with your session, if you want to click on the leaderboard and see how you're doing MMR wise, that's perfectly fine. But that's at that point you're caring less about the MMR that you have and more about the progress that you're making. And that's much healthier than tracking your MMR after each game. And lastly, this is one that's rooted in League of Legends, but has very real applications for Gwent. And that's focus on yourself, not your opponent. And in League, one of the best things you can tell people is you're the only constant. Don't focus on your teammates or your opponent. But that's very true in Gwent too. Even though you don't have teammates, only focus on yourself. You can't control what decks your opponents are playing. You can't control what decisions he's making. So focus on yourself. Ignore the plays that your opponent's making. Ignore the, the deck that they're playing, you know, from an emotional point of view. Obviously, from a rational point of view, that's very important information to have. But don't start thinking about how much you hate that leader or something innately just because you see it. It, it, it won't help you at all from a rational point of view. Not to mention, it'll make it easier to shake off any sort of, you know, quote, high rolls your opponent has if you're not really paying attention to their plays from anything other than an analytical point of view. The last thing I would advise you to do is refrain from using the phrase, I deserved to win that game, or my opponent played poorly, he didn't deserve to win. This, is, this word deserve is very dangerous to players in card games. I see a lot of people get caught up in that word. And the problem is it's so subjective and inherently aggressive because deserved is very, is very relevant. You know, your opponent obviously won't see it the same way. Not even your peers might. It's just people seem to forget that there has been this inherent variance in card games in that there's draw RNG. You are unlikely to see every single card in your deck in most games unless you're playing a hyper thin list. And it won't always be in the same order. There is draw variance in a game. And so there's always been RNG present forever. And the thing is, when you use these terms like deserve, you're very much going against this inherent RNG. In 100 games, you might not see that scorch that would win you the game once or twice. But at the same time, you're going to win games because your opponent doesn't find that scorch one or two times in 100 games. Variance has an interesting way of balancing out, so really try to refrain from using that term of he got so lucky, he he didn't deserve to win. It's not really going to help you at all, but it will, it will add fuel to the fire of how you feel. 
And you just have to trust that if you're making the best plays you can every turn and focusing on yourself, that even though your opponent may have gotten lucky, you're making the right decisions long term that when the variance evens out, you will still be climbing you know, over time. And that's sort of how the top tier players do it. You just focus on yourself and know that if you're making the best plays you can over and over and over again, that you will get to where you want to be. All right, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Once again, I'm super happy to be a part of Team Gwinnelman. Thanks again for the offer and the best of wishes to Team Aratuza for the offer that they gave me and the phenomenal people that are on that team. And I just wanted to say again, I'm looking forward to doing more videos. A quick update on Know Your Enemy. There is a Know Your Enemy currently being edited right now and in the works. I'll let you guess the deck. I bet it doesn't surprise you. But, you know, keep tuned for that. We have some more stuff coming down the line. I'm looking forward to it a lot. And that being said, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all with the next lesson.